So a lot of you know me as the New Japan guy. I was, you know, one of the YouTubers who actually watched a lot of New Japan Pro Wrestling. And I've recently been taking a break from the product. I have not watched literally anything from New Japan Cup so far. No reviews. I haven't even touched NJPW World in like the last like two weeks since their last New Beginning show. And, you know, it's been kind of weird. I feel like there's been a bit of a missing void in my wrestling fandom you know when you ask me oh what are the top shows you watched like back in january it was AEW, it was new japan pro wrestling and honestly that's kind of it you know as as big a wrestling fan that i am i feel like that i've kind of really narrowed down a lot of what i watch and what i consume i still watch a lot of wrestling i watch wrestling from a plenty of other companies but like what companies do i watch the most consistently it's kind of got narrowed down to two and then after taking a break from new japan it really got narrowed down to one and that's aew and i think uh, a lot of people can really just assume that's why there's been a lot of content on my channel lately that is partially why but uh have been having some family um matters that had to be taken care of some um a, a recent family emergency i should say and that's why i've uploaded in the last week uh, might be getting on track very soon, but it's still kind of a pending thing happening out behind the scenes that, you know, it's kind of affecting my uh, ability to create content at the moment. But I wanted to get this one out because this is one that I teased last week. I know a lot of people were really excited for me to talk about, and that is Pro Wrestling Noah, a company that I've known of for like the last few years. I know of this company as the company that uh, Kenta came from, the one that Minoru Suzuki once was in. And, you know, one of the very other wrestling companies to check out, you, you know, when people talk about pure wrestling, the names come up is New Japan Pro Wrestling, All Japan Pro Wrestling, Pro Wrestling Noah, Dragon Gate, Big Japan Pro Wrestling, DDT, Star, like there's so many wrestling companies to check out in Japan. But a lot of people usually just think about New Japan Pro Wrestling because they're really the WWE of Japan, the Japanese wrestling scene. And Pro Wrestling Noah is kind of lumped in there somewhere. I don't want to say it's second. If, if it's not second, it's third. If it's not third, it's second. Uh, but you could put it however you want in there. But Pro Wrestling Noah is also a very great wrestling company that I have not really given a lot of my time to because, I, I don't know, I think as I've gotten older, I've even though it doesn't really take a lot, for me to get invested into a wrestling match, it does take a little bit more for me to get invested into a wrestling product. And I think it's because I've I've kind of lost so much hope in my home wrestling product of WWE that when I see these other wrestling promotions, I feel like there has to be a little bit more done than just, oh, that was a great match. I'm going to start watching tomorrow. You got to do a little bit more than that to really get me hooked into the product. But New Japan Pro Wrestling, I would say I've, I've known New Japan since 2015. But I didn't get hooked until 2018. And you could say, oh, well, you got hooked because of Kenny Omega and Chris Jericho. And yeah, you could say that. But like I said, it was a big lead in from three years going into that match that got me hooked into New Japan. Well, Pro Wrestling Noah, I've seen, I could say, maybe a, a handful of Pro Wrestling Noah matches in my entire lifetime leading up to this moment. And same with New Japan. I've seen like maybe like two handful of matches before I got into the product. But I've never sat down and watched the full-length Pro Wrestling Noah show until now. So, that being said, I'm going to talk about Pro Wrestling Noah's Great Voyage in Fukuoka 2021. What were my thoughts on the show? This was, after all, my very first Pro Wrestling Noah show. So, this isn't going to go like my traditional reviews normally go because I... There's not really a lot for me to grasp and review because I don't really know enough about these guys to really, like, you know, sink my teeth into what's going on. And, oh, this is how they normally write. Like, I, th this was a first for me with everybody, like, basically on the show. Except for, like, maybe Kaiji Mudo and Go Shiozaki and Katsuki Nakajima. Everybody else, first timer. I don't even know who they are. So, it's going to be very much an informal review but i will be uh going through these matches and exactly if i like them what i liked about them and if i'll check them out again also before we get into it i'm most likely not going to be showing my face and the only reason i'm going to do that is because i have notes that i put up here and because i don't know who these guys are and partially i don't remember some of the names to the faces i don't want to be looking 
at my notes the entire i don't want you to see me look at my notes the entire time i'm going to be looking at my notes the entire time but i don't want you to see me looking at my notes the entire time did i come away from it thinking it was one of the greatest things i've seen am i now a pro wrestling noah fan let's talk about it so the very like beginning like i'm gonna divide this into like three acts you know the first act would be like you know the opening matches the first three opening matches the second act would be like you know those core mid card matches then act three would be like you know co-main event main event let's put it that way so act one had a few matches in here you had and i'm gonna butcher the hell out of these names so please forgive me uh, you had Yano Yatsuka, you had Okada Kenya and Inamura Y versus Yohei Ohara Hijame and Tanaguchi S. And I thought that was a good opening match. I think the guy who pressed me the most in that match was Yohei. Uh, he was he had the blonde blue hair. I, I felt like you know he wasn't like electric super speed high speed wrestler, but like. His style, his flair, just how fluid he was in the ring. It, it was definitely gravitating me towards him a lot. Uh, seeing a guy named Okada in the ring and was kind of weird. I mean, obviously, there's other Okadas in the world. But, you know, I've been watching one Okada all, like basically all my life. So, now seeing Okada Kenya, I'm like, who the hell is this scrub? But, <laughs> you know, um, it was a it was a solid match. Uh, Yohei ended up winning the match at the t uh, running Meteora. It was... It was an enjoyable opening match. It was a nice tongue coder. I enjoyed it. Then the next match of that, after that was Hayata versus uh, Miyawaju J. That match was, <clears throat> I thought it was, it was it was a pretty decent one. Hayata, I called him in my notes, the uh, Undertaker's illegitimate Asian child because he wore the eyeliner and had like all black on. But the opponent, Miyu, uh, I'm going to push this a lot, Miyawaju J., that guy impressed me a lot. Like, he came in there with MMA strikes, high-speed action. Like, he was... I felt like he was just a little miniature Ibushi. Like, and I hate doing wrestling comparisons, but he reminded me a little bit of Ibushi in his style. But it was a lot more strikes incorporated in there, and I, I thought I thought the dude took off in this match, and I actually wanted him to win at one point. But sadly, he took the L in this match to Hayata. But, you know, like I said, I thought that was a fairly fairly good opening singles match for the show as well uh then after that you had another singles match it was saito atakoshi at atatoshi akatoshi akatoshi versus muhammad Y. I thought this was like it was fun i don't think it was a good match but it was a fun match muhammad Y. he came in here dressed like tiger jackson from tekken like he had the afro he had the glasses and as a humongous tekken mark I I was already in love with Muhammad Y. Now in the ring, he gave me uh, Ryusuke Taguchi vibe. Now if you don't watch New Japan, you don't know who Ryusuke Taguchi is. But I got humongous Ryusuke Taguchi vibes. Now I'm not a big fan of Taguchi myself. I'm over Yano guy, but uh, Saito Akatoshi, he was fair in this match. He was kind of like the leveler. He really was trying to cut my Muhammad down whenever he's doing a goofy nonsense. Uh, but when they went at it, they went at it. I mean, they were older men, so it wasn't like anything high speed, nothing too crazy. I would say, if anything, it was definitely on the slower side, but it was enough entertaining action that, you know, didn't, you know, get me to check my phone very often, which I didn't really do on the show because I wanted to give this show all my attention. Um, the finish, though, I, uh, I thought was kind of funny and I really enjoyed uh, Saito actually hit a claw slam onto Muhammad, which the great Okan probably is not very happy about, and Muhammad kicked out. And then when he got up, they looked at each other, they screamed, and Muhammad hit a running lariat on the Saito and pinned him. Now, Saito kicked out a three, trying to protect himself like many wrestlers do, but he got the three count off the lariat, and I, I don't know, just seeing these older guys wrestle each other, doing the comedy spots, there was just something very funny about that. It was, it was fun. I, I won it. I feel like that this were... If I feel like if I were a big pro wrestling Noah fan and I've been watching for three years, I would have been annoyed with this match. But being a newer fan, I felt like I couldn't hate this match. I couldn't hate it at all. <laughs> so then we had another tag match, which confused me because it featured Hayata again after we just saw Hayata in a singles match. I'm like, he's doing double duty. That's interesting. But he teamed up with Su Susumu uh, Yuya versus Daisuke Hirata and Fujimaro Kai. 
Uh, Fujimara Kai was a young lion of the match. Uh, he impressed me a lot. He reminds me a little bit of Ren Narita in his um, nimble frame, but he was slightly faster than Ren is. Uh, I don't think anything in this match really did much for me outside of the finish when uh, Yuya hit a fireman's carry roll into like a cross face onto Kai, which was smooth as hell, and he tapped him out. So, like I said, I'm running through this review. It's a very informal one. I'm just going over what I liked about the match. Um, none of the guys really on the undercard outside of Muhammad, uh, Hayata, and the uh, Miyu Aju J guy really, you know, grasped for me. And Yohei. Yohei, I can't slay him. Everybody else, they were kind of on the card for me. But then after that match, we had Keno, Neo, and Huao. I'm, I hope you got to pronounce it correctly. Versus Kendo K, Nusawa R, and Katsuyuki Fujita. Now, I remember Fujita from the infamous 30 minute stare down he had with Goshi Ozaki uh, last year. Now, I did not watch that full length match, but I remember that stare down. I remember who he was. It, just, his, just his body uh, frame in general. He looks like a big ass boulder. Like, you guys remember that big boulder? I don't know if it's actual monument or like from a TV show. It's in like Night at the Museum. Like, he reminds me of that big boulder from Night at the Museum, just in how he's built up. Uh, Keno, I don't know anything about Keno, but in the time I've been watching wrestling, and I've been scouring YouTube for wrestling matches, and I've seen Parasic Noah, I've seen that trademark blonde hair, so like, it's one of those things where like, hey, I've seen you before, but I have never seen what you can do, so now I'm interested to see what you can do in the ring. So I had some, you know, mild interest in what Keno can do. Um... I feel like I didn't really see enough of him in this match. It was a lot of Nio and Hao, which they were fine, but let's see more Blondie. They had a cool aesthetic to them. Like, Team Keno had a crazy cool attire. I like their attire a lot. I actually like their faction a lot, too. Uh, Katsuki Fujita, Kendo K. Kendo K was the mask guy. I, I, he was like, basically, I called him Noah Bushi. <laughs> Noah, not Ibushi, but like Bushi from uh, LIJ because he was like the only match wrestler in the ring. They were fine. I thought the finish, this match was like two matches in one. The finish of the first match was dumb as hell. Clever, but dumb as hell. So, Kendo K takes uh, one of the guys from Kendo's team up the ramp, right? He takes a chair with him. Now, he wraps the head of the chair around the neck of Nayo, I think. And then he takes the legs of the chair and he tries to put, you know, the legs, the feet of Nio in them to trap him. Which I'm like, that's interesting contraption he has there. I, I like that, but I don't know if it's going to work. Now, mind you, you have the rest of the factions up on the ramp. Keno's team is beating them down. Referee's counting still. Here's the count of 17. He goes a running, but he doesn't make the 20 count. And I'm like... So, this match ends in a draw. Alright. So, so, then Keno gets in the ring and he's yelling. He's like, yeah, we're not going to end this match like this. Or whatever the hell he said. The bell rings. He and Fujita went at each other from the very get-go. And I'm like, yes, I want to see these two go at it. And then he locked in a sleeper hole to slow things down. And I'm like, what the hell? They had a little bit more match in here. Um, it, like I said, this match was... I thought the fact that it got divided into two matches really um, cooled down a lot of my excitement for part two of it. But um, in the end, it was Fujita hitting the power bomb onto Hawao to get the pin for his team. And you had Ken on the outside of the ring with a glass pane over his face trying to get, like, was getting stopped by Kendo K, which is, like, what's a pretty funny sight. But, yeah, that was the match. I thought that was, you know, a, a pretty decent. I, I wanted to say good. But I felt like the whole two-parter thing really just took me out of it for for the most part. But uh, then we got into Act, I would say, I like the end of Act 2, beginning of Act 3. Uh, with Yoshioko S and Kota J. They went up against each other for the GHC Junior Heavyweight Championship. I enjoyed this match, even though it was very New Japan-esque in, in the way it was positioned. The first 10 minutes were slow. They were, um, you know, trying to build up to the crescendo. And I'm like, I've seen this so many times in New Japan structure matches. Like, I'm over it. Let's fucking go at each other. 
Just, just do it. I want to see a Natsu Poi versus Azumi. That's what I want to see from these two men. But I, I didn't really get that till the end of the match. And I didn't really get that in this match. I mean, we were expecting some uh, high flying shit because they're the junior heavyweights. But no, they they gave me they gave me Harumu Takahashi versus Show instead of Harumu Takahashi versus Will Ospreay. That's why I'll say about this match. In the end, though, Kota J ends up transitioning an O'Connor roll into a kill switch, which is a swoove transition, by the way. He gets the pin, and he becomes a new GHC Junior Heavyweight Champion. I like this match. I would have liked it a lot more had the first 10 minutes not just went like a flat line, and then it's like, eh, and then it started going up slowly. Um, like I said, I feel like I've seen too many New Japan matches for me to like just kind of be okay with that. But like I said, it was enjoyable for the most part. But then we got into the co-main event, like Act 3. You had a f uh, eight man tag team match. You had uh, Team Nakajima. You had Katsuyuki Nakajima, uh, Masa Kiramiya, Suyo Minabu, and Tarasuke. Uh, Tarasuke? Tarasuke? I'm going to say his name Tarasuke. Versus Suzuki, Saruga, Sugira, Sugira? Sugira Takagi, uh, Naomuchi Marafuji, and Go Shiozaki. So. Go Shiozaki's team, I, I believe it's called Noahism, or at least commentary said they were called Noahism. I watched this on uh, Fight TV. And they were the most squad team of this entire thing. Like, they were on point. Everything was smooth. And, you know, I love the hell out of Katsuyuki Nakajima. Like, a, like I feel like every wrestling fan, when they start getting into promotion, they choose that one guy they're going to get behind forever. And for me, it's definitely Katsuyuki Nakajima because he impressed the fuck out of me in his in the first match I've seen him in. He's like the Kota Bushi for me of Noah right now. Uh, but Go Shiozaki is definitely, like, right behind him. Right behind him. Um, I wanted them to start off the match. They did. It, it got me out of my chair. I was very excited to see these guys go at it one more time. Even if it was very minor because they tagged out like two minutes later. And I'm like, boo. <laughs> but everybody in this match got their moves in. I would have preferred it not went 30 minutes. But it was structured well. Everybody went at each other that you wanted to. Everyone, like, I feel like got their time to shine in here. Some more than others, but everyone got their time to shine um it was just a very well structured match i thought easily this was the best match on the show was an eight man tag which is hard to say because i feel like i've seen so many goddamn tag team matches from AEW new japan but this eight man tag i honestly thought was the best structured maybe even the best match on the entire show and the finish the finish was just like ah! so <laughs> it was a faction finisher so suzuki i don't remember who it was on but suzuki hit the 619 all right then Sugira, Sugira gets him up for an angle slam. And then Shiozaki waits for him to get up and hits a running lariat onto him. Then Marafuji hits a stiff knee right to the face. And I'm like, literally all four of these guys is teamed up on this man. Just straight gang shit. I loved it. They got the win for the team. No ism. If they're a faction, that's my facts right there. No ism was just crazy good in this match. Like I said, I love Nakajima. I thought his team was well, but like everybody in this match was just on point. On point with each other. And it's sad because I really didn't get to see Go Shiozaki's reign as a champion. I know he had this great gimmick called I Am Noah. Like he was the Okada of Noah. And I really didn't get a chance to see his his like, you know, that gimmick or him in fruition as like the Okada of Noah. I'm really just caught, came in at the very tail end of it. But I enjoyed the hell out of this match. And then now we got to the main event of Kaiji Mudo defending the GHC Heavyweight Championship against Kaido Kiyomiya. So. I wanted to ha I wanted to really like this match. Kaiji Mudo is an absolute god legend in the business. You can call him whatever you want. That dude is a goddamn legend in pro wrestling. From his time in WCW... His time in various wrestling promotions. He will go down in history as one of the greatest of all time. <clears throat> However, he is 58 years old and he has passed his prime. Now, I'm not trying to be disrespectful. I'm not trying to shit on Kaiji Mudo. But he he had to be he he had to be carried in this match. Now, Kaido Kimiya, <clears throat> I've not seen any of his work beforehand. I saw him when he came out. I'm like, this guy is very young. He could be a dead ringer for 18-year-old, honestly. He's very. He looks very young. He looks very nimble. He looks like a very much a high speed wrestler. I feel like in any other situation, any other guy, he probably would have went out there and stole a goddamn show. 
But this match, this match, I, 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 I don't know if Kaido had to slow himself down. For Ka I'm pretty sure that maybe the fact that he had to slow himself down for Kaiji Mudo. But the first 10 minutes was a headlock. Like, it was Kaiji locks in a headlock. Then Kaido locks in a headlock. Then Kaiji's like, I could do the headlock better. And then Kaido's like, I could do the headlock better and longer. It was egregiously slow and boring. I almost turned the match. Like, it was so slow and boring. I legitimately thought about turning the match off. And I paid $20 for the show. And I wanted to enjoy it. But I was so ready to turn it off. Because I was bored with the first opening of the match. And the first opening of the Junior Heavyweight match... It was slow, but it was not this slow. It was not this plotted. Like, they repeated the same moves. That's what was slow about it. And that was just contrite and tedious, and it, it, it was making me mad the way it was going. And then it started to pick up a little bit, but it never really kicked into high gear because Kaiji Muto is not very fast. And that really bothered me. And then there was one point where they had a, cho had a chance to really kick it up, Mudo went for like a dragon screw and Kaido dead weighted himself and I'm like this is a perfect opportunity for Kaido to do a, a foot stomp and start to get this match up but then he locks in a headlock again and I'm like stay in it stay in it you've been through this entire just stay in this match and I'm like this is the last this is the main this is the last match of my first show of Noah and I'm sitting here Debating on if I want to finish it. That's not good. It's not good. But at one point, uh, Kai Kaiji hits a Rana onto him, which, mind you, and his match against Goshi Ozaki, uh, where he beat him for the GHC Heavyweight Championship, he had a Rana. It was a terrible looking Rana, but he had a Rana onto Goshi Ozaki and got the pin. Now, in here, he hit the same Rana. The Rana was not much better looking, but he hit the Rana onto Kaido, and I'm like, this might be it. But Kaido kicks on. I'm like, holy shit. Kaido's still in this. All right. Let's go. Now, I didn't for a single second think Kaido was beating Kaiji Mudo. I don't know the booking of Kaido. I don't know the booking of Kaiji. I don't know how Noah books the rest of their fucking, you know, you know, show. But I didn't think for one second that this young kid was going to beat this 58-year-old legend. Didn't think for a second. But Mudo hits a Shining Wizard onto, Ka onto Kaido. And he blocks it with his arm. Now, mind you, throughout the match... Kaido Muda was aiming at Kaido's arm. So he blocks it with the injured arm and he starts selling it. I'm like, that was cool. I like that spot. He used his own injured arm to block the hit and not get hit with this devastating Shining Wizard, which has put so many men away. I like that. So Muda sets him up for another one. And the same thing happens. He blocks it with his injured arm. And I'm like, all right, I just saw the spot like 15 seconds ago, but it was cool. But then... Mudo actually hits the Shining Wizard onto him. I'm like, oh. Okay. Probably end of the match. Because Mudo Shining Wizard, that's his finisher as far as I know. But Kaido kicks out. Shocked me. I'm like, you know what? Oh, all right. This match might start kicking up here. Might be getting to that New Japan Epic. Or if the Noah Epic. Whatever the Noah Epic looks like. Right? Because he kicked out of the finisher. Well, he says, I'm going to hit another finisher. So he hits the Shining Wizard again. I'm like, you... Didn't you just hit, like, three Shining Wizards on Takaido? He hits it again. I'm like, all right, this is probably the end of the match. Because usually you hit back-to-back -back one, that's the end. Kaido kicks out again. I'm like, okay, so Kaido's going to come back and, you know, give him all that he got. But my, my, Mudo's going to hit, like, another Shining Wizard in the match. Mudo, like, hit locks in the arm bar. Now, like I said, Kaido's arm has been picked apart this entire match. Not the first time he's been locked in the arm bar, but the arm bars apply it. My Kaido's struggling. He's struggling. The commentators say, "Oh, he's going to tap out," and I'm like, "Can't tap out." It, he got hit with, he got hit with two finishing moves, and he's going to tap out to an armbar of all things. It can't be the finish. But what do you know? Like ten seconds later, Kaido taps out to an armbar. An armbar, just a cross armbar, and I said, "We, I." I 32 minutes on the clock, and I sat here and watched this this slow match for an armbar finish. I was very dissatisfied with that main event. Um, I'm not here to shit on it. 
because I don't want to shit on this show because I overall final thoughts I guess I didn't think the show was bad I would even go as far as say if I'm being um if I want to be frank about it at its best this was a good show however personally I don't think the show did much for me and I think I'm more of a heavy heavier critic of this show because I paid twenty dollars for it like I paid Fight TV, $20 of my hard-earned money before the stimulus check came in, before my tax refund came in. I paid them $20 to watch this show. My first show, I had high expectations, and I don't feel like my expectations were really met. Now, the best match on the show, I liked just about all of it. But then the main event soured me on it. Like, just soured me. Like, I'm just like, that's how you end your show? It felt like a hey, revolution. Like, the, the show was good, and then the main event happened. You're like, really? That's how you end your show? So... I'm going to say this much. Did this make me a Pro Wrestling Noah fan? No, it did not. I, the, the level I'm at with Pro Wrestling Noah, before the show started, after the show started. Like, it's literally just the same. I don't feel like I've been moved up. Maybe a little bit I got moved up because, like, I like some guys. Nakajima, I love. I love Nakajima. I very much uh, like uh, Go Shiozaki. Uh, I like um, Naomuchi Marufuji. I'm very much interested to see what goes on with Keno and uh fujita and i uh like the miyu waju guy and the hayata guy interests me and yohei interests like there's some guys in there that i got my eye on forever checked out noah again i'm not gonna say I'm, i'll never watch this show again like i'm willing to give it another chance in the future but as far as oh you're gonna watch the next pro wrestling noah show no i'm <laughs> I'm, I'm i'm not i'm sorry this show did not do enough for me i felt like i'm a little bit harder to please when it comes into getting into a wrestling promotion like you can have a damn great show but you need to have a damn great show with damn great matches and damn great characters and a wrestler i could truly get behind when new japan it was a longer process it was three years building up to wrestle kingdom that i finally got into it maybe with noah i have to well it's a few more matches to get into it but you know off this one show did it make me a fan i gotta say no it didn't good show but maybe when maybe when kaiji mudo drops the championship i'll i might consider watching it but i don't know if i could watch a show where kaiji mudo is the champion and i've seen like two one bad match and then like one eh, match from him like if this is going to be how the heavyweight championship matches are i have no interest in watching those heavyweight championship matches and if your main event scene is not great the champion is not great that's really a representation of most of the show and it's like they're not really on my interest in watching the show so kaiji mudo right now for me is a turnoff so that might affect me going forward i don't know but uh like i said there's some things to like about this show there's definitely one thing i would say i don't like about this show but overall good show personally didn't do anything for me but i think somebody out there will have enjoyment out of watching this show uh, but that was Pro Wrestling Noah's Great Voyage in Fukuoka. What did you guys think about the show if you watched it? Uh, do you want to see me review Pro Wrestling Noah more? Comment down below. Let me know. Smash the hell out of the like button. If it does really good likes, I might end up doing another one. Who knows? But that's all I'm going to say here. Thank you all for tuning in. Thank you all for listening. I love you guys as always. And I will see you all in the next video. Peace.